This was the gray space back in April. And here it is in September. As the space takes shape, so does the way that grace is meant to work. The way we lay it out is we lay the menu out first and we figure out where each course is going to be picked up throughout the kitchen. It's not saying, well, because it has fish and it has this, it needs to go to that station, not necessarily. That station can have fish, and that station can have a vegetable course, that station can have the amuse. In a normal kitchen, you'd see the snake, as the orders start coming in, you'd see it come all the way around the kitchen and then hit pastry and just blow up, right? Or each station gets hit. Pick up eight beef, pick up 15 this, right? Not the case here because we strategically put them in different places so not one station gets hit all at once. So. Was it the same way to linear? It was the same way to linear, so everything's movable, right? The idea is to be able to pick up food wherever. What, one of the really cool aspects of the entire process has been having the opportunity to design the dining room from absolute scratch, right? We got to literally design the service pattern and then kind of design the room around the service pattern. You spend my whole career working in restaurants where a server station is not what it should be or the wine cellar is located in this wacky place that takes forever to get to or there's just a million different things that as a waiter you're like I'm not set up for success because of the following 25 things. So what we wanted to do was design the room so that their server stations, the tools that they need are easily accessible, but they're also totally excluded from the guest experience. I have then blessed my team with uh, what is potentially like the greatest server station ever on the planet, right? My Nebuchadnezzar of stemware and silverware. Uh, you are absolutely unlimited on silver, stem, trays, Linen, uh, I mean everything. Look at the shelving, Mike. I mean, literally, look at it. There's a tear that forms in, in a waiter's eye when they see this. When they when they see the shelving, you can get out on one side. You can get out on the other. You're gonna have POS terminals on both sides. I mean, it's all right here, and it's literally in the dining room, but without being in the dining room, right? It also creates a really cool trail too. So if you're in the kitchen and your full hands in, full hands out, so you got plates coming out. If you want to access the dining room in the far corner, if you want to access the table in the far corner of the dining room, instead of walking through the dining room, past 25 tables with food that doesn't belong to them, it's not going to them, they run past down this little area here and directly to that table. I kept thinking of like those, um, those little motorcycles in Tron, you know what I mean? How they, they, can't make, they can't make corners, they just go left and right and straight forward up and back, you know what I mean? Our core intention in the kitchen, you know, I hear chefs say all the time, is to source out the most incredible ingredients he can get his hands on and pay, and pay honor to those ingredients by doing this and that and the other and yada, yada, yada. Well, what we try and do in the front of the house is just pay homage and honor the guest participation so that they know from the minute they walk in the door to the minute that they leave that we're grateful for their participation. Chairs are nice. <laughs> you know what I mean? Carpet's nice. The artwork's gonna be awesome. The woodwork's gonna be beautiful. We're building all of that, but that's not what makes a great restaurant a great restaurant, right? The gratefulness and the gratitude that you feel on behalf of the team that's working in that restaurant for your participation and your presence, that's what makes a great restaurant. So like we were saying before, right, full hands in, full hands out, right? So if you and I were waiters and we each grab plates, because there's no, if you can't mayday your way out of that. Once you touch those plates, you own them, right? So dish room will run, it'll, it'll run a nice, remember clean lines, right? Nice clean line, straight back to like the world's sexiest dish room ever on the planet, uh, which is gonna run in a nice horseshoe fashion here. This is for, uh, plates, stemware, silverware, like China only, right? All the delicates. They're gonna go here. So you've dropped them off. Congratulations. First thing you're gonna do as a captain to back or a bus is head back into the dining room. So you head back in this direction. And the first place that you walk by is our expediter who's standing right there, right? Who's like a trained professional and Hawkeye and waiters and getting them to reparticipate in the taking of food back into the dining room. So you step over here and then Expo hands you two brand new plates. It's designed in a way so that the captain or the back waiter cannot go back out to the dining room without going by Expo. They have to run by the Expo so that the Expo can utilize them because there's, in, 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 in tasting menus, there's just a constant flow of plates coming and going out of the dining room. 
when we started designing the kitchen, that was like the main focal point. Where does this guy stand? How's it efficient? Let's build it around that guy. Because he's like control center. He controls everybody. So if I'm a wait staff, I'm coming in, and I know I'm picking up three caviar, and I know caviar's being plated down there, I'm gonna simply walk down. However way, pick up the two caviar, and then back out and around. Where I plan to be, I'm, I'm not really sure yet. Uh, I would think heavily focused here, only because I think some of the more intricate dishes are gonna be here. And what's this side? This, this side is, you know, this is obviously the hot, so it needs a little bit more attention than, um, so what a, a cold dish that can sit there. Anybody that's on this side needs to be very efficient and good at what they do. So this is probably majority where I spend majority of my time, but there's also a point in time where you know, every, every one of my staff that I've talked to, anybody that I've hired or am going to hire, who have potential hires, I said their number one goal is to push me out of this kitchen. That is their number one goal. Because if I feel like I don't need to be here and be a part of service, then they've done their job. Because now, not that I'm not going to be here, the idea of me being able to walk around and float around and see and taste makes it a little bit better experience than for me to have my head down over these eight dishes all night long. Now, are you going to go out and, and work the room? I don't, I don't think so. I mean, the that's, whole idea that's is... That's what Mike is you know, for. You know, the idea is part of the experience. We want the guests to come back in here and, and walk through the kitchen and see the kitchen. It's a beautiful kitchen. It's going to be stunning. Um, other than them coming up to the window and physically looking in, I want them to come back. And let's, I would love to see every guest and talk to them. But does that mean I need to go to the dining room? I'm not that type of guy. I'm not that chef who goes and parades to the dining room. It's just not me. You know, there's some chefs that like to do that. I don't like to do that. I'm more than happy to talk to everybody and anybody, but come back to my world, you know. It's exciting to get a guest to come back to the kitchen. They like to see that stuff, you know. So. I waited tables for a long time. I know all the tricks. I know all the, I can see them usually coming from a mile away. Things I don't ever want to hear. Well, it's so-and-so, we used to do it this way. Okay, That's, that'll be a conversation we're gonna have. You know, oh, well, you know, it worked better this way at this other place that I worked. We're not here to do it that way. We're here to do it our way. We're here to reinvent it. We're here to try and figure out the best, most efficient way to do everything possible so that our service pattern is as streamlined as it possibly can be for the sole purpose of taking really, really, really great care of our guests in our dining room. They have to be of the same mindset as far as the culture of the restaurant is concerned. And that culture is we're going to kill ourselves every single day to take care of our guests in the best way that we can possibly do it. If you're not in for that, it's no big deal. It's just not the, it's not the restaurant for you. There's lots of restaurants in the city. Some you make lots of money at. Some you can walk up to the table and say, how you doing, guys? What can I get for ya? <laughs> this is not that restaurant. So, you know, so you got to be a particular, there's got to be something ugly inside of you that just really loves obsessing over the most minute, awful details of a service pattern. That even in the darkest of hours, when we're here at three o'clock in the morning, talking about what happened in station this and that and the other and yada, 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 when you're tired and you're exhausted and you wanna cry and all you wanna do really is go home, there's still gotta be something weird in your bones that's going, this is awesome. Sexy ass stuff. Are you are you recording? Yeah. Can you record this? Ah!